everybody see my screen? Yep. Well, I see my screen, which is a representation of your screen. So I don't really see your screen. I'm not there with you. That'd be silly. Well, that's that's, that's true. I appreciate you clarifying that. Sure. Right. sure. That's that's an insight for this morning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so uh, yeah, you speak truth. So uh, let's uh, hope that carries through to the lesson today. Okay, I just have like only a couple uh, easy warm up questions. What special gift have you received recently? My so, son is five years can cancer free. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, my uh, second shot. <laughs> My, uh, my daughter, who uh, works for Google in San Francisco, um, told us you know, just a couple of weeks ago that she was starting to read through the Bible, and she's doing a Bible study with Diane, and we've been praying for that for a long, long time. Wow, that's fantastic. That's Praise great. Lord. Lord. Yeah. Is she still writing, Greg? When we were there, she always loved to write. Yeah, she's she does that, but um, art is her thing, and that's what she does for Google, so that's kind of where she spends her time. I wish she would write more. We, we just found uh, probably 30 journals that she had filled. Wow. You know, with stories that she wrote. And uh, yeah, so. Wow. Great kid. How do you determine what kind of gift to give to someone? Let my wife pick it out. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but it's Diane's birthday tomorrow, so I better figure this one out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you how I used to do it. There's a system. There's a place in Zionsville. It used to be on the corner called the Jewel Box. <laughs> it's still there now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I went in and I had them put together a three ring binder for my wife. And when she'd stop by during the year, she would write down things that she liked. So when I came to her birthday, I'd just go in and have them pull out the black book. And I'd just go down the list and see which one I thought I might want to get. And then she was surprised because she never knew which thing I would get, but she knew it was coming from the jewel box. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I think I can do that same thing at Target. <laughs> uh, I don't know the turnover. <laughs> you won't get the same person. <laughs> uh, yeah, that just kind of reminded me of when I was a little kid. It was uh, every Christmas, my grandfather would give my grandmother a pair of hose. I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't very imaginative, but I just remember that uh, uh, back then. But uh, did you ever see the hose? I don't know. It was a package, whatever it was. Well, that that makes a big difference. <laughs> oh, you well, mean later? Oh, uh, the kind of sure of hoses. Yeah, you know, there's all different kinds of hosiery you can buy. Oh, hosiery. Well, maybe that's. I don't know what the. Well. <laughs> Dwight, back in back in you know the '40s, that was a big deal because that was kind of a restricted. <laughs> it was a very difficult technology, so it was probably a big deal when he first did it. Oh yeah, well think of all those guys in the army that used to get sent hose. Yeah, that was big harder with. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rick, this is your part here. All right, here we go. Believers, spirit, believers spiritual blessings come with access to the power of the sovereign ruler of the present and future ages. These blessings include riches that make early earthly wealth pale in comparison, such as a lofty position could create a temptation to boast about these blessings or one's role in acquiring them. In Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, Paul was will abolish all cause for human boasting and salvation, leaving all the glory for salvation to God alone. 
God's merciful turning of the believer's depravity into salvation through Christ glorifies through Christ glorifies the workmanship of God. The passage moves from a description of the depravity of all people to the working of God's mercy in Christ, concluding with a reminder of why our salvation is no cause for both people. All right, thanks, Rick. And uh, I guess uh, Steve Novus, you've been doing the regular reading, so this is uh, your turn. Thanks, Dwight. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up in Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this, not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. All right, thanks, Steve. Any uh, initial comments, thoughts on the? It's one of the toughest things to understand. It's because you, you always feel like you have to do something. <clears throat> and and you don't want to get caught up in that. Well, but you should be doing something if you're really Christ-led, right? If the Christ is in the center. But you don't have to do anything to receive this. So it's a tough one. Yeah, and we've got some questions exactly on that, uh, what you just said, Greg. So just remember your answer. <laughs> 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 Write those down. Dang it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a couple other passages kind of relate to some of the things uh, we'll be talking about. Uh, in Colossians, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sin. And then in the uh, first five, which we'll be talking about, I guess I'll wait and read that while we get to that again. So in Ephesians uh, 1, the first verse, uh, Paul says, uh, you were dead in your transgression and sins. So how does sin kill? Well, it separates you from Christ. That's a good answer. Makes you vulnerable. Yes, it does. All right, let's, um, how would you uh, describe the spiritually dead? Lost. They have to be in the immediate because they have no future. No hope. No sense of purpose. God. Pardon? No sense of purpose from God. No. Okay. Okay, Paul divides your life into two periods, and uh, uh, what are they? Well, I guess the time we were dead to our transgressions and the time we were alive based on his grace. Yeah, so it's kind of a, just a simple, dead and alive. Yeah. 
I forget the movie that had Tom Cruise and uh, I forget her name, but there was a part in there where he said, with me, without me, with me, without me. And it's night, been, n- night and day. Yeah. Night and day. Yeah, night and day. Same thing with Christ, right? With me, without me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. Thanks, Greg. Cheers. Who, who owned you in the first part? The evil one. What was the result? Death. Death. Yeah. All these are too easy. I'm just blasting right through this. For what purpose did God take over your life? To save me. Yeah. <clears throat> Out of his great love. Yes. Yep. And it's all kinds of this. Uh, I'm sure. I think it's an email I sent out too. I mean, this kind of all summarizes uh, the whole uh, gospel message, especially in verse eight. So, okay. Uh, this might be a tricky one. It says, "Look at the verse four, where it says, but because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But most other translations start off the word verse with as but God. And you'll say, well, this is kind of almost the same thing, but the NIV does not. What difference does it make? Well, there's a certain situation or state that we're we're naturally in, but God has other plans. There's it's it's his 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 doing that we not stay that way. I think it's a tense issue, isn't it? <clears throat> because but because means the mercy's always been there. Uh, but God kind of infers that then, you know this then that so i don't know that's the subtlety i get out of it no and i think that you both of you are, are, are good because i think they you're right it doesn't put the emphasis on god as much as but god does so i mean it's so um that's really it's god's action uh puts him up first and forefront in, in that uh, in that pa- passage so on uh, verse 5 uh, Paul repeats the point he made in verse 1 as if he is saying if, if he is having trouble believing the depth of God love, God's love uh, do you ever have do you ever have believing that I ever have trouble somebody left out that word I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think uh, the the uh, also had Ephesians in the Amplified, which uh, says, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life which he quickened, with which he quickened him. For it is by grace and his favor and mercy, which you have did not deserve that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. So, so kind of like what uh, Greg mentioned earlier a little bit. Uh, do you ever have trouble believing that the depth of God's love? It is very hard to measure. What I mean by that, I heard someone speak to this once. They said, if you took your child or your children and you had a very, very good relationship with your children, very intimate relationship with your children, God loves you many, many, many more times than you even love your own children. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's, that's true. If you think about your kids and like, I don't know, maybe... None of you necessarily had a prodigal child, but I have, and I have been. So, uh, but it's just 
the, just the, the the joy and at the same time it's heartbreak that your kids can bring you at times and but you still keep loving them and and it's that's kind of how God is. I mean, how many times do we have, uh, we bring him such joy and then uh, also a lot of heartbreak when we turn from him. So I, I think of Chuck and what he does and that, um, you know, most of us don't live the kind of lives that the folks that he ministers to live. So it's hard to see. Diane and I were married by a pastor that didn't become a pastor until he was 55 years old. Before he was 55 years old, he was part of a motorcycle gang. And of course, this is back when motorcycle gangs weren't, weren't cool things. They, they, they were, these were bad people. <laughs> and when you talk to him about this concept of grace, you could tell that he really understood the depth of that grace because he had done some things that he he couldn't himself forgive himself for and it was just a, a a really amazing example to hear a pastor speak personally of that it was pretty cool so it's uh implied not explicit but not explicitly stated in verse five but who do you think in the Godhead makes the dead alive? Jesus. Uh, well, there's another one that I think they're thinking about. There's only two others. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yeah, thanks. That's what that's what we were looking for so well i think kevin was right because they're all three the same thing i read that somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, de we definitely get partial credit on that question <laughs> you all know, three have the same game plan there you go that, that's true. never want to say jesus is the jesus being the answer is wrong <laughs> nobody no that's that. right i a oh, partial credit. <laughs> did you did you give him a third for that? Yeah, a third. Yeah. My heart started pumping when you said there's somebody else. I was going, oh my god, who <laughs> 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 could that be? <laughs> okay, where where we we talked about our position being positionally located uh, on uh, earlier part of this lesson or maybe it was in Galatians but uh, according to this uh, where are we positionally when we are in Christ or when we have been saved we're, we're raised up with Christ right so according, according to this uh, what we've been reading in Ephesians so where is Christ at this point talking about the right hand yeah and so where, where are we? At the right hand. We're right there with him. Right. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's what that position leads. Uh, that's where we are, even though we're not, uh, if uh, people would look at us, they'd say, well, I, you know, he's not uh, really uh, good enough to be in that position, but spiritually we are. We aren't. That's the that's the beauty of it. We're it's all on him. Right. So according to uh, verses uh, four through seven, what motivated God to save us? His great love for us. Great love for us. Yes. I thought there was another. Uh... Does it happen to be bolded? Pardon? Does the answer happen to be bolded? Uh, you look at the no, what that? that, that no, well, that, I think I forget why I bolded that. Maybe we already did that question. But uh, 
I think you do that sometimes to throw us off, but it's just me. That's me. <laughs> there could be some truth to that, Greg. He only wants to give partial credit. So a little <laughs> bit of mystery. <laughs> Not that this is a competition. So. <clears throat> Anything with guys is a competition. <laughs> yeah. Why are these uh, motives? Uh, oh, there must have been more than one, I guess. That's what I was looking for. Uh, but why are these motives so remarkable when you consider our condition as non Christian? How could we possibly deserve that love? Yeah. I mean, when you look at God, He's good. When you look at ourselves in and of ourselves, and we don't fit that same definition uh, of being good. Yeah, I mean, that's the part that's sometimes really hard for me to uh, uh, get my hands around. I guess going back up to the earlier questions. And stuff. I uh, am. It's, it's really hard to comprehend god's love for us and i uh i may have mentioned this before but um i think of um that book by tim keller the prodigal god and his the the premise in the book is that the prodigal in the story is the is the father who is reckless with his love and that he without any consideration for what son had done he he still extends his, his love recklessly his forgiveness and his grace um that and i i don't know it kind of that picture helps me to get a glimpse of just how how, how great god's love is and for us yeah i think i uh i thought i had another question maybe it's on the second page um uh, so before you before you go to the next page, I, I I'm just thinking Peter must have had the scroll with that Colossians quote in his you know tunic and shoved it in Paul's face every time he saw Paul just to win that argument about circumcision. I, I just thought that was <laughs> funny. Yeah, but, um, yeah the. Uh, Peter, Peter had mentioned somewhere I was reading too about this passage. I can't. Uh, yeah. Maybe it'll come to me later. So. <clears throat> okay. So, according to verse eight, how is sin appropriated? Or salvation? That's not the answer I'm looking for. Face. My no. face. <laughs> Huh? By faith? By faith, yes. All right, you have a gold star today. All right. So grammatically, not from yourself or not of your own doing refers to the entire clause containing grace and faith. So both grace and faith come as gifts from God. Since faith is also a gift, what should believers conclude about their significance in their own salvation? It is insignificant. Yeah, we didn't. I guess as I would say in my, uh, we didn't do shit, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> NIV translation. I think I had these for some uh, and Habakkuk says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. And God gives us the grace and faith. So, hey, hey, 
Dwight, we just uh, ju- we just finished a, a, an in-depth Bible study of Habakkuk, and the pastor at New Hope did it, um, David Bourne. It was unbelievable. I had never read the book in detail. I mean, it's such a short book, but the the depth of it is amazing. It's actually his personal notes, they believe, over his lifetime. And it's 10, over 10 years of his life when, you know, he was kind of living in a time of great turmoil, the Babylonians and stuff. And so it's, uh, it was really cool. I mean, it's worth maybe a look because um, he just did a, an amazing job of trying to understand what Habakkuk was talking about. And um, it was incredibly deep compared to the, the short, you know, it's just a tiny little book, you know. Um, and that's the way I always read it. Oh, it's a little, it's a minor prophet book and nothing, yeah. nothing to it, but it was really something. Yeah. I, yeah. There's so many ones uh, and that might be one we need, we need to look at uh, uh, soon too. And, and Susan right now on, on her own study is going through Job and we talked, I mean, she's been through that, the Bible several times, but that she's going through Job again. And she said, what well, I never realized how many references to Christ are in Job? And so I'm going, well, I guess I haven't gotten into it to that depth, but yeah, she was, uh, we were talking about that the other day too. So as much as I wanted to uh, avoid Job, maybe that might be worth looking at too. So. Verses uh, four through nine, Paul tells us about some tremendous things God has done for us. List as many as you can find. And I didn't underline any or bold any of them. Well, (laughs) (laughs) made us alive in Christ. Extends his love. Yeah, good, good. We've been saved. We got a good gives, seat. What was that gives one? Us eternal riches. For the workmanship. Yeah. We got a good we got a good seat. We got a good seat. Yeah. Created in Christ. Created, yep. Yeah. Okay. And we kind of, kind of talked about this a little bit too, but according to verses eight through nine, what is our part in responding to what God has done? That's probably the greatest gift of them all, which is an example of how to treat others and live your life and share of what you know and, and, and how to access that, that incredible gift. Yeah, he just says to, Trust him and receive the gift. Work to do good works. So what is our nature and purpose according to verse 10? Well, we're created for good works. Right. Right. And that's been, and it's, that plan was laid out beforehand. God has, we each have a, have a unique purpose for which he created us. Gives you a new appreciation for the depth of the fall, doesn't it? If we were created for that. And to be, you know, perfectly made for that, look, look where we ended up without him. So it's like, you know, yeah, got, along that same line, I think I had some other passages. Uh, so you, you formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. Your very hands have held me and made me who I am. Give me more revelation light so I may learn to uh, please you more and uh, 
this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by himself. So in looking at um, what verse 10 says, um, do the verses below kind of apply and how? Well, they speak to how perfectly we were made and how carefully and how, how personal it was for God, for each of us. And it pushes back on the thought that say, the world we live in is a random event. Right. And I, I think what occurred to me more since I'm so uh, anti-abortion is that God every soul or when you're conceived, God has written the whole story of your life, the whole book. And it, it's just uh, uh, breaks my heart on how many of those stories are lost with each abortion. So, Have you, have you seen that, uh, that movie on Stephen Hawking? The theory, a Theory of Everything or something like that? I'm not sure what the yeah. title is. Yeah. It, it's amazing. He married a Christian woman, and that Christian woman basically was the reason for him to stay alive. You know, not a little bit, but his, you know, he lived to be like 72 years old. He was supposed to die at 20. Um, and, and how his passion for the purest of physics kept him away from God is it's just so sad when you see what he was allowed to do given all of, you know, he had ALS and given all his infirmity, he just didn't understand what the gift was. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting book, I think, or it's an interesting movie from a perspective of a Christian to watch. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, so man, um, Many scientists, uh, and we talked about this before too. I mean, the early scientists were all just trying to understand how God made and did things. But then, as we got into that, then uh, man, today I think science just says, well, you know, there there couldn't be. Uh, although some of them are coming back to this, there couldn't be intelligent design. We're understanding how things were made, so we know more than uh, God did. So, yeah. And Hawking actually bounced back and forth on that point of, you know, what he would find. Sometimes he would say, well, there's no way this just happened. And then other times, I think, I think part of it is he was angry, you know, with what his condition and he couldn't separate it, even though that was his whole point was you have to separate science from God because it's, it's polluting, you know, what pure science is. And I think that's to your point, a lot of where scientists sit rather than looking through the lens of God at what they see, they try to look without that lens and they find things based on human limitation. So anyway. Yeah, well, there's so many you know, things when they try and uh, understand the Bible and apply scientific principles, although I'm kind of uh, moving from my uh, belief that the uh, Earth and the world and the universe is billions and billions of years old. So um, I'm thinking that's a much shorter time span than what uh, scientists and things are, are trying to make it uh, to be. But uh, <clears throat> there's a lot, lots of uh, unknowns, but a lot of proof. And as I, I shared with you the other yesterday, and I should have written the uh, last Friday. Should have written it down, but the uh, the name of God's in the numbers of uh, our DNA. That those four or five numbers. It's in the the Hebrew name of God because the in the Hebrew the letters also represent numbers. And so if you look at those, the DNA chain, the numbers exact and the number of other. Things too, so. Uh, so any other comments on this? We move on to. Some things uh, to focus. 
I don't know. I just pulled these out of some of the reading I was doing uh, last night. So the, the theocentric uh, focus of Ephesians has emphasized God is not an onlooker in the salvation process or in an angry huff waiting to be appeased. Rather, he is the primary actor, the one who, by his love, deals with his own wrath and shows mercy to his people. Or as we might say today, he's kind of a hands-on guy. Um, one point Paul is trying to make here first, who writes this stuff? What hers here? Anyway, is that when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him, he raised and exalted Christians with him. And uh, the five key words, uh, grace, truth, faith, love, and hope, encapsulate the Christian gospel. Grace is the key ingredient by necessity, and by necessity comes first. Everything else flows from and builds on a theology of grace. Grace means the completely undeserved loving commitment of God to us. For some reason unknown, unknown to us, but which is rooted in his nature, God gives himself to us, attaches himself to us, and acts to rescue us. Though wrath should have come, saving grace comes instead. This action is rooted in God's very nature. The initiative always lies only and completely with him. No human action could remove us from the plight in which we are found. If grace is God's giving himself to us, this text underscores that grace connects us to Christ. So, any thoughts on any of that? I think that's the, the fundamental difference between Christianity and every other major religion out there is, you know, Christianity starts with grace and the understanding that it's not you, it's him and his, his sacrifice. And every other major religion out there is, okay, these are the things you got to do. And if you do it well enough, you'll get to this level. And if you don't do it well enough, you'll be down here at this level. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, it's just amazing how fundamental that, that first step is, right? Which you don't take. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the, you know, just kind of building on that, the, it makes it really clear that, and I go back to what, Greg, what you said early on about the, the tense being a past tense, this, this work was already done. Yep. And, and, and the, the fact that make no, don't get confused about, you know, you know, where your, your good works come from, your good works don't provide you faith it's, it's out of your faith and out of what god's already given us that that the good works flow and i i thought about that it's like you know if you really sit and try to comprehend god's love and you know how great that is and how incomprehensible and what we've received from that we get so filled up it just it has to flow out of us we can't we can't help but do good works when, when we get so filled with God's love. Yeah, that's why I, exactly we talked about before, how works are a fruit of right. being connected. It's not uh, something we do to earn. It's uh, as a result of what we are in Christ, being connected to the divine. And that's the fruit you can produce. Okay, and what in your life is due only to God's presence and goodness? What isn't? Yeah, that's what my, my answer is <laughs> going to be everything. So, yeah, uh, for me, I think it starts with peace. It's just, it, uh, it's impossible for me to to slow down and just know that he is God without the grace that he, that he provides. So how do uh, self-reliance and individualism make it difficult for us to accept God's free gift of salvation? Well, it's a, it gets in the way. It's a stumbling block. It's, 
because I can do it, right? Right. Yeah, I think it kind of, this verse reflects on even our country, the ideal of individualism. And it's kind of, things get pointed back at me. Look at me and all the great things I can do. We yeah. also think that it, it, we're, we're self-reliant because he makes us that way. He makes us be able to rely on ourselves within the talents and gifts that he gives us. But that's after you've made that step and to uh, accept his gifts. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. I, I think even there would be... Oh, it's in John. It's where Jesus is speaking to his disciples and says, I'm not going to be with you always, but he's sending the spirit, the spirit of truth. And he's going to give us the gift of the spirit confirming his truth and the instructions how to live. Right. Exactly. And that's, that came from me that, that the heart, that's the hard part is, uh, I mean, it's, gives us everything we need and uh, is just surrendering to the spirit and letting him uh, guide it's it's uh and i've made reference to this many times because i remember my parents reading the book but uh was a pilot saying god is my co-pilot and then it later became if god is your co-pilot you need to change seats <laughs> Because, I mean, that, that's uh, the His Holy Spirit living in us gives us everything we need to uh, to uh, uh, follow and be the kind of people that, uh, in God's eyes, we already are. But it, uh, I think that individualism and self reliance, even after being a Christian, sometimes can get in the way, and you're thinking, well, we don't need to listen to the Spirit when the Spirit is there to. Uh, guide us in the right path or help us make decisions and uh, do the right thing so i think just to add to your comment about he's not only the pilot or co-pilot he's actually the uh designer and fabricator of that plane yeah that's that's right our culture values so much i mean you hear you know, the self-made man, the, you know, you, you just, you, you make the investment, you do the work, you get the reward. That, our, our culture seems to tell us that that's, that's where the value is. And, you know, then I think, of, then, there, then there's Frank Sinatra, you know, I did it my way. And they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Okay, any other thoughts on this passage? Uh, you know, for me, when I, I've, I've read through this several times, you know, one thing, and I did some research on this too, you know, the question is, is what, uh, what happens to a society or a civilization that keeps moving away from God? Yes, we're about to find out. Well, there's a guy by the name of Carl Zimmerman in 1947. <laughs> did a study and they're actually, this has happened many times in our history. And he went through each one of these places that, that was Rome, Egypt, uh, Babylonia and uh, Samaria. And he went on and on where, you know, they, they obviously were not following the, the commandments. So they moved away from uh, everything that was created and, and by God and, and didn't believe in God. And, uh, it's an interesting read, but it, it really in, internally it, it eats you up from the inside out. And uh, yeah, you're right. I started thinking about us where we're going right now. When uh, bear with me here a minute, I think I've got some of it written down. They, they were talking about how uh, with marriage is no longer sacred. A traditional marriage isn't even thought of. Um, talking about uh, feminism and how that's moved away where God has specific roles that we play and the feminist role doesn't have that, that same role. Uh, increase in disruptive uh, uh, 
for parents with their children, um, uh, increase in juvenile delinquency, promiscuity, uh, rebellion, uh, hostile and re rebellious people, uh, and, uh, and the acceptance of adultery. It's in the movies, it's everywhere. And that, you know, that was written in 1947. <laughs> and boy, that, that fits today. And the author's name again was Paul? He's a soci sociologist. His name is, uh, we, I found him, he's Carl Zimmerman. Okay. And he's a sociologist and he wrote that in 1947. But yeah, we're, we're living that right now. I mean, you see it, uh, there's no um, sanctity or, uh, of life. Uh, and just uh, this uh, gender fluidity thing just kind of uh, kind of drives me crazy, and, and the fact that uh, all all the um, advances women have made in in sports, and now they want to allow biological um, men and boys to participate in that. But although some states are starting to uh, enact legislation that uh, will prevent that from happening, but uh, so I was filling out an application the other day and it asked me what my gender was and then it had in parentheses what you had, what you were at birth. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is just, this has gone way too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, got Kevin, great, I got a great story. When they used to hand out those uh, cards for kids in school, uh, my twin boys, uh, and, you know, we tried to raise them, you know, that everybody was the same, I don't know. And uh, so when they got that card, I got a call from the principal and said, you know, your one son is uh, trying to be smart. And I said, well, what do you mean? You know, he's, he's a cocky kid. He filled out his card and on the blank where it said race, he put human. Well, that's human race. <laughs> yeah, so that's not a, that's not a, a untrue answer. No. And That's they were, partial. but think about it, they were upset about it. <clears throat> they wanted white, African American, you know, Asian. Oh, yeah. Well, see, now that's the thing, too. That's, he was, uh, and I've heard more than a number of people of all, a number of different races say, well, why do you keep wanting to divide us by, by this? I mean, why right. do, we're humans. I mean, we're Americans, but, you know, you want to be, African-American or you want to be black or white or brown and uh, I don't know I've never taught to but classify people like that but I think Dwight would have given half credit for human yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's partial credit partial credit right. partial credit partial credit yeah we all strive for partial credit <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's, things are so crazy. I mean, I think, what was it, one of the uh, um, shampoo or soap manufacturers is taking the word normal as an option. You know, you have oily, dry, normal hair. Well, they're taking normal off. Can't use that word anymore. <laughs> anyway, so what we have on, on the... First, do we have any updates, additions? Yeah, I, um, I got a bad situation. Um, on the list there, it says my step, my stepbrother and pray for his healing and that Jesus would draw him to himself. Uh, my, my, my stepbrother has one son and yesterday he found him dead in his apartment. He had uh, killed himself uh, killed himself. and uh, oh, man. so that that last night I had a conversation with him and it's really a bad situation and I don't I would just um, he he doesn't know Jesus he's he's not a follower and I don't I don't know what my role and how I can be God's instrument in this, but, but God 
God's presence needs to be felt and um, just needs to try to redeem this situation. Yeah, I'm so so hard to hear that, Kevin. So sorry to hear it. Yeah, that's tough. Very tough. <laughs> so, anything else initially? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, prayers of praise just for Tyler, my son, being five years cancer free. Okay. Oh, great. Great. Okay, let's spend a few minutes in, in prayer then. And, and again, uh, I know I keep coming back to this, but uh, let's pray for uh, restoration and then revival in our country. Dear and Father, we thank you for uh, for your word and, and this time that we can have together on Friday. Our Father, it's uh, really a blessing to get together with you men and to uh, uh, hear uh, what... Uh, their, their thoughts uh, as we go through this passage. Uh, it is really a blessing. Um, Father, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, we pray for for Kevin and, and give him guidance on what to do to help his brother and, and just pray for peace for the family for the loss of his nephew. And he is there. He, he loves your brother, Kevin. And um, just just be there for him, and uh, just have God bring peace to his heart. His heart. Thank you, God. 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 Father, we just uh, this life can be so so much a struggle, and we're just uh, we're concerned about our nation. We're concerned about uh, uh, people struggling. We're concerned about this uh, the COVID and and all the confusion and the, the things going on about that. Uh, Father, we we just this is the time that we need we need you. Our nation needs you. Uh, you see, even from our from our list of, of Kevin's brother and everything, others that uh, really need your presence. We need your presence uh, now. Uh, we need you to uh, uh, come into our our lives and the lives of our nation, and uh, uh, just let your presence be known that people see who you are and what you can do and, and how you can help. We know you love us. I mean, Paul just uh, told us uh, all about that uh, this morning and, and even in the, the state that, that we're in and the, this country and the state of depravity that you still want to reach out and draw us into your close to, in your arms, with your arms around us, uh, give us peace and comfort. And we think especially for uh, Kevin's brother and the family, his uh, father, let the, uh, ask that you be a real presence, uh, whether it be through physical uh, touch of, of someone or someone in the family, but uh, just reach down and uh, uh, intercede and, and be a part of those lives that need you the most. Uh, we ask all these yeah, things in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Bible study, Dwight. Good job. Thanks, Dwight. Oh. Thanks, Dwight. <laughs> no, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. All right.